Well, uh, welcome back. So, um, so in the previous two parts, uh, we have been solving for um, this uh, differential equation using regular perturbation methods. Um, and uh, just as a uh, recap, we found the zeroth order solution, and, and we are uh, assuming an expansion of y to leading order in epsilon, uh, which means we are assuming a solution of the form y naught plus epsilon times y one. Um, and we found the zeroth order solution as sine of x divided by sine of one. Uh, subject to the boundary conditions that y0 at x equals 0 is 0 and y0 at x equals 1 is 1. So we found this. Um, and then we were in the process of solving for uh, the first order solution y1 where, uh, where it satisfies the differential equation y1 double prime plus y1 is minus 2 cosine x sine 1 divided by uh, minus 2 cosine x divided by sine 1. And uh, if we just call this constant factor as a, uh, we can write this as a cosine x. So this is a linear uh, second order differential equation subject to a forcing. And so its overall solution will have two components. Uh, one will be the homogeneous solution, which is which is uh, obtained by setting the right hand side the forcing to zero, which gives us the equation y1 double prime plus y1 is zero. And so that's the homogeneous solution. If you solve for this, we get this as the homogeneous solution. Uh, and c3 and c4 are as yet undetermined constants. Um, and then it will have another component which is the particular solution which comes from the forcing itself. And, um, and, in, the, and, and, and in the previous part, uh, part 2 of this uh, 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 series, uh, uh, of this uh, method of solving uh, for the differential equation using regular perturbation, uh, we used, uh, we sort of uh, used the method of variation of uh, parameters um, to, uh, to, solve for, uh, uh, to, to solve for the particular solution which assumes the form ax divided by 2 sine of x plus a divided, a divided by 4 cosine of x. Um, and now we need to solve for these constants subject to the boundary condition that y10 is 0 and y11 is 0. Right? And these boundary conditions we, uh, we obtain by uh, writing, uh, so, uh, so the boundary condition we obtain by writing um, y of x again in the form of its expansion y0 x plus epsilon y1 x. Uh, and now we know that y of 0 at x equals 0 is 0, which will give us y0 0 plus epsilon y1 0. And then y at x equals 1 is 1, which is y0 1 plus epsilon y1 1. And if you compare the like powers of epsilon, we find that y0 0 is 0 y0 1 is 1 whereas y1 0 is 0 and y1 1 is also 0 because there is no term corresponding to epsilon on the left hand side here. So that gives us these two boundary conditions. Okay. So now let's find out the constant c3 and c4 subject to these two boundary conditions. Um, so if we substitute y1 0 as 0 we find 0 as at x equals 0, sine of 0 is 0, so this term goes away. Cosine of 0 is 1, so we have C4. Uh, x equals 0, this term is 0, and then cosine of 0 is 1, so we have C4 plus A divided by 4. And that gives us that C4 is minus A divided by 4. Okay, so that gives us one of the constants. Uh, and then we use the second boundary condition that uh, y1 at x equals 1 is 0. So again, this is 0 at x equals 1. So c3 sine of 1, but c3 is already 0. Uh, sorry, no, c3 is not 0. So c4 we know. And then we have c3 sine of 1 um, plus c4 is minus a divided by 4 cosine of x um, plus a plus a now x equals 1 we have 1 sine of 1 divided by 2 plus a by 4 cosine x so this term cancels out and this gives us c3 is sine 1 goes away is minus a divided by 2 Perfect. So, um, so actually, if you write down the full solution for y1, we find that y1x is 
minus a divided by 2 sine of x. But c4 is minus a by 4 cosine x, so this term drops out, so we don't have to include these two factors. Um, and then we have plus a x divided by 2 sine of x. So that's our complete solution for y1, the first order solution. Um, okay, great. So now what we have to do is uh, we need to combine the zeroth order and first order solutions to write our complete solution. So our complete solution for y is y0 which is so y0 plus epsilon times y1 which is sin x divided by sin of 1 um, minus now a is 2 divided by sin of 1 so plus um, 2 divided by sin of 1 will give us sin x divided by sin of 1 uh, plus again a is minus 2 divided by sin of 1 so we will have um, minus uh, 2 cancels out so it is um, x sin of x divided by sin of 1 and this whole quantity is multiplied by epsilon. Now we can combine these factors together to write the complete solution as um, So the complete solution y of x is sine of x divided by sine of 1 and then we have 1, uh, 1 plus epsilon minus epsilon times x to big O epsilon square. Great. So this is our uh, perturbative solution to the ordinary differential equation subject to the boundary conditions that we have uh, we have discussed y zero y at x equals zero is zero and y at x equals one is one and this is our uh, solution to big O epsilon square. Um, so one of the things we can now do is uh, we can solve for this uh, equation exactly uh, subject to the same boundary conditions. Um, we'll find that we'll, the, the solution will be will contain the parameter epsilon in some form uh, and if you assume epsilon to be small we can expand it in a Taylor series to check whether uh, the solution that we've obtained using regular perturbation actually matches the solution matches the exact solution once it is expanded to uh, the right order to, 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 to order big O epsilon square um, in, in, in a power series like expansion much like we did for, uh, ordinary, uh, for uh, our algebraic equations. So, uh, so let's do that uh, in the next part just to cross check whether everything we've done is correct. Um, so, see you in the next part. Thanks.